Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Terry, and I'm here at the Two Rooster Farm. At this time of year, like I suppose probably most everybody that has a garden, it's tomato season. And I have a bounty of tomatoes that are ready to have something done with them. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to share how I make my homemade salsa. So let's get started. This is a quick scan of some of the ingredients you're gonna to need to be able to make my salsa. Start by getting a large pot, filling it with water and turning it um, to high and boil it. Add your tomatoes. This takes minutes and uh, the skin will start to crack on the tomatoes. Put them into a bowl of ice cold water Change the water fairly often uh, as the water will get quite warm when you keep adding tomatoes to it. Just uh, move your tomato to a cutting board and remove the skin and core it. Very, very simple. Uh, it just basically just comes right off on, with, in your hand. I was really happy with the variety of tomatoes that I got this year. I was watching Roots and Refuge uh, farm and uh, Jessica was giving her, uh, her uh, this tomato seeds that she plants and I basically uh, ordered every single thing that she did. <laughs> Had some successes uh, and some not, some that I probably won't get next year, but for the most part um, I was really, really pleased with the tomatoes that, that I got. It seems like I've been growing tomatoes like forever. I know I planted the seeds in February and it's like six months, six months of your life you're, you're, you're dealing with tomato plants. I won't plant them um, that early next year. I probably will maybe plant them in March. They got just too, um, they bolted um, in, the, in, in the little greenhouse that I had them in. And so I'll, I'll start them later next year. But uh, really, really happy with uh, the variety. Nice, big, meaty tomatoes. So you're going to need uh, eight cups of tomatoes for one batch. I have a lot of tomatoes, so I am doubling the batch. But I'm just showing you here um, what it takes for one batch of my salsa. And nothing is going to go to waste. I'm gonna give all the skins and the cores to my chickens. There they are in the pot. Now we're gonna to start to cut the onions. We're gonna need two and a half cups of chopped onion, any kind of onion. These were from my garden and they're white Spanish onions. Chop them um, as small as you like. I used uh, two large onions. I think uh, two and a half cups of onions is approximately two medium onions. going to need one and a half cups of chopped peppers. The recipe calls for red and, and um, green peppers. I like a variety of peppers in my salsa. I like all the different colors. So I have orange, yellow, red, and green peppers. I just slice a little bit from each pepper and uh, put those in into my salsa. You put whatever you want if you don't like certain kinds of peppers, then don't put them in your salsa. Clean them off, uh, just get the, wash them off and get all the seeds off. Cut them fairly 
thin. Just I just slice them all thin. Then I just turn it and slice it again to have little small little cubes. I remove the white part. I don't, I'm not too sure what it's called. Whether it's sort of like the orange, the pith of the orange, or the pith of the pepper. I don't like that in my salsa, so I remove it. Looks great. All those beautiful colors. Then you're gonna pour that into the tomatoes. And then you're gonna to start to cut your jalapeno peppers. It would be smart probably to wear gloves. Uh, I'm trying to be very careful and not touch my face, <laughs> but uh, it has happened. Uh, it's, it's surprising, you think you wash them and then you touch your lips and then you wonder why your lips are burning. Just, uh, I don't like the seeds in my salsa. I don't like it too, too hot. So I make sure that I scrape most of them out. I cut them really, really thin, turn it, and then slice them again. One cup of jalapeno peppers is what you need. And if you like spicy salsa, then, then you just add more. And then add that to the pot. These cloves of garlic are from my garden. Nice big cloves of garlic. They were really hard though. I don't know why the skin was so hard, but, uh, but they were really large, large cloves. And I used this little yellow thing to help remove the skin, but it, um, it didn't work very well because the skin was so hard, so I still had to peel it a little bit. But it does make it a little easier to get the skin off. six cloves of garlic you're going to need. These are fairly big cloves, so if you happen to have cloves that are a little smaller, you might need to have more than six cloves of garlic. I love this little mincer. I've had it for a long time. Works really good. the remaining ingredients. One eighth of a cup of coarse canning salt, two teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of black pepper, one third cup of sugar. Yes, my recipe has sugar. You don't need to add it if you don't want to. One small tin of tomato paste, tomato sauce, one can of niblet's corn and I drain the liquid off, and one can of black beans that I've drained and rinsed, and one third cup of white vinegar. Get a big spoon and you're gonna mix it and you're gonna keep it on the uh, stove. You're gonna bring it to a boil. Um, I just boil it for maybe 10, 10 minutes is all I do. You don't want things to be, to get tender. You still like them to be a little bit crunchy. So I basically bring it to a boil and turn it down, let it simmer for about, you know, under 10 minutes. Turn the heat off and then you're gonna start to put it into your sterile jars. There we go, here it says, bring salsa to a boil, stirring often, reduce heat to simmer. Yeah, good. Looks good. I was using this pathetic little white or red <laughs> measuring cup 
to pour it into my jars and you really can't get to the bottom and a lot of the um, pieces of tomato and onion fall are settled in the bottom so you really do need a, a ladle and you need to give it a stir every once in a while and then scoop from the bottom so you can make sure that your jars aren't just filled with liquid it's very very hot Fill it to about a half an inch from the top. You're going to get a, a clean cloth and you're going to make sure, clean the top of your jar just so that um, you'll be able to seal it properly and there won't be anything, any um, tomato stuff on the lid that prevent it from sealing. Tighten it. Don't super tight it. Don't, like, don't make it super tight, but make it tight enough. And then plop it into your water bath canner there. You're supposed to um, cover your jars with about one inch of water. My water bath uh, canner um, does not allow me to do that. If I filled it up, it would just pour out the side. And uh, you need to be careful about um, your altitude. Uh, mine requires that I I boil it, a rolling boil and process for 15 minutes. And if your altitude is higher, 1,000, 6,000 feet, it's 20 minutes. And if it's you're above 6,000 feet, then it's 25 minutes. So it might be a good idea to uh, find out what your altitude is and, uh, you, and process your jars the correct amount of time. Well, good evening. It's uh, about 10 to 10 at night and I'm just finishing making my salsa. I took a bit of a break. It was such a lovely uh, evening that my husband and I decided to go for a walk on the beach. So we did that, but it's now 10 to 10. I have finished my first lot in the water canner, 15 minutes, and I'm just waiting for my second batch to be finished. And then I'm gonna be hitting the hay. Anyways, I just uh, hope that you enjoyed learning how to make salsa. It's a great recipe. I make it quite a few times during the year. Uh, I can't keep it stocked in my store. As soon as it goes in there, it's off the shelf. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And uh, I'm gonna say goodnight. This is Terry from Two Rooster Farm. Bye for now.